Good evening, everybody. It must be Thursday night, another edition of Born Political. I'm your host, Joe Dela Cruz. Uh, if you noticed in the in the intro, it doesn't say State Representative Dela Cruz anymore. Uh, I, I was officially uh, not the state rep yesterday, I think at about 1130 in the morning. Uh, Andre Bumgarner is the new state representative. And like I said, again, I'll make sure I'll be working with him to, to, to give him any help he needs. Uh, tonight's guest is from the other side of the river. A lot of you guys know that I'm a New London guy. <clears throat> and when I moved over here to Groton, I had to kept getting reminded that if I wanted to see civilization, that I should come back over the bridge. Uh, like, it, you know, like Groton's a little bit country. And it is to some extent. But, I, you know, I like to have them come over and see the life that we live over here now. Uh, this is a, a New London legend in my mind. He's owned a business in New London for 53 years. Um, I met him through work. Uh, he's a great guy, great business guy. Uh, you're going to notice his name comes up as retired because uh, thankfully he got to do that. And I, I'm looking forward to meeting him. Hopefully you guys out here in Groton and Stonington uh, like what you see. And I'm sure you've heard of him anyway. If, you're, if, you, if you ever had any work on your, in your, on your boiler or plumbing, you, you probably dealt with Murray at one point or another. Uh, but without further ado, Murray, welcome to the show. Welcome to Groton. Thank you for having me, Joe. Pleasure to be over here. And I'm I want, want to compliment who's ever in charge the stoplights on Long Hill Road, <laughs> uh, I, I went right there because I was a little late. And when I was in New London, every red light I hit, as soon as I got to Long Hill Road, it was cake. Get Getting here only five minutes late. You see how it is in civilization? I didn't think you had it in you over here. I, I got to tell you, you, you are correct, though. But Route 1 for, 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 for our part of it is, is amazing. They, the state just went through it. So from one end to the other, it's all new pavement. They did a lot of the upgrades. Those are newer lights. So I think they read traffic patterns and they're adaptive. So it's, it's one of those things. The project got done and, and you, you're the benefit of it today. What you does got, that mean, adaptive? You're throwing me uh, the, They're adaptive to the traffic. So a lot of these lights that we have in the state now, that they're new, they'll read traffic patterns. And so when you saw that they were turn, turning green as you went, it was to keep the flow going. That's they, tremendous. Those things talk to each other now. They're not independent. They're, they all work in, in, in flow. So that eventually saves gas money, and so you're not sitting at a light. So is there and, a wire in a, in a road, or is this done? Ca cameras are on top. Tremendous. Uh, the wires in a road, sometimes, I think that's the older technology. The newer lights are just reading that there's actual vehicles in place. You don't have to worry about cutting lines and, and, and ruining the pavement and putting wires in and pressure sensors. So a lot, of, a lot of them still are that way, pressure with a wire, but I think all the newer ones are cameras. Well, they're working. Yeah, they're working, and, and that's that's who Murray Renshaw is. He he likes that he's the nuts and bolts guy. So he has his own show over in New London. It's called the Renshaw Report. Boring, boring. It's, <laughs> that's, it, I put myself to sleep. To be honest with you. You know, I got to tell you though, there were at least two or three really good shows you had because I was the guest. Yeah, absolutely. So so we kept we, I kept people awake that day, and and you you interviewed me as a state representative, and and you know you and I uh, we find ourselves on separate side of the politics often. Most of the time. Uh, most of the time. Uh, but never, ever, uh, you know, gentlemen like, and we've always discussed the issues, and that's what I liked about you. And I know, I know you're passionate too. Um, but the show Born Political is about my guests and, and who they are. And and you have such a long storied career in New London, fifty three years in business. But did did you forty in business? Forty in business, fifty three years old wrenching, fifty three years wrenching. But you, so you started. Were you a New London guy, like elementary school all the way up? Or were you? From? I was born in New London. My father was in the service. So we travel around quite yep. a bit. When I got out of high school, um, I came back to New London and have been here ever since. Oh, so you went to high school out of state or you Philadelphia. were Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Yeah. That's why you're so tough. Instead of your brotherly <laughs> love, man. <laughs> tough. <laughs> <laughs> they toughen you up down there. So I, I didn't realize that. But again, you know, I just assume that in and because we were talking about my mom and, and, and my large family. And if you knew one of them, but you wouldn't have went to school. So in elementary, no, at no point did you go to school in London, or I went to St. Joseph's for about uh, a month and ran away. <laughs> and uh, my cousin, on the other hand, who, who you know, Richard Cash, yes, uh, he he went to school locally. But I, yeah. I I was I wasn't lucky enough. I wish I had because what I see, Joe, uh, from the people that, that I know, they have a. Uh, friends that they go back all the way to kindergarten with, and they're still friends to this day. Yeah. And uh, I don't have that. I mean, the camaraderie is uh, yep. second to none. Yeah, well, you know that, the green and gold, the, the feeling. You see it because you're talking. But you, I, I think your camaraderie you built, although you might not have met these guys in high school, uh, you have the, the group of folks that go to your shop still to this day, 
and you guys get to talk politics and whatever's happening in London of the day. And I think you've developed that group after, you know, and, and, and through your business. I mean, you know, how many customers do you think you served over, over no, the 40 years? It's got to be thousands and thousands. Well, a lot. It was, right? And every day was fun. There's no, there wasn't a day that I didn't like to go to work. I never had a bad day. Even on a bad day, yep. I loved what I did. And yep. uh, I advise, I love to advise young, young kids, find yep. a job you love. Because if you don't love it, it's going to be work. And yeah. uh, it's, it's a long time to go to work. I know so many people who don't like what they do. Yeah. Uh, but I, I advise young, young people all the time on that. So what people don't know is tonight, tonight it's live here. But at 8 o'clock tonight, I'll be on your show, the, the, Ren, the Ren Show Report, which I'm excited about being back over there. Um, I was able to talk to people. Well, let's that, see how this goes first. Julie. Let's see how this goes. Yeah. <laughs> We're not out of the woods yet. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> The, the invite is very, is very iffy. We're, we're on eggshells. So far, we're okay. So far, we're doing good. Doing yeah, good. I told you. So, so, so really about you then. So most people don't understand that. When, when someone commits to the military, uh, like your father did, uh, they're not committing themselves. They're committing their, their whole family. Yeah. Uh, changing schools, coming to new communities. So when you, when you live in a community like Groton, like before I came to, new, to Groton from New London, I didn't understand the impact that we have and what we do, how it affects our Navy families and people that aren't from around here. And the Coast Guard uh, is just like that to New London. But these are young men, and they usually don't have children. So I, I got that part. I feel like we always, you know, we, we would see students or Coast Guard cadets buy them lunch or go you know, thank them for their service and try to do things that would that make them feel like part of the community. Uh, but with the Navy, it's different. You know, the Navy, these are full families, and we the outreach is a little bit different. And what a different community. But to, to know you're in the same position that a lot of these young kids that we work with are. You know, one day, you know, my wife said she had like four or five really good friends in third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, and then they went away, and you, you never found them again. Yeah. Because they went to somewhere else. Their father was serving, a mom was serving. And I think that's, that's I mean, that, that has, impacts a lot of the ways you think later on politically. I'm sure, you know, being a military family, I'm sure that's, you know, there's, you have a certain view on what the military means or what it means for your dad to be in it. You know, I appreciate it more now than I did growing up or that I did for most of my life. But uh, that was a tough existence and a very difficult, uh, dif very difficult lifestyle in a lot of ways. There were yeah. a lot of good points that I, I remember, but uh, as a kid, as a dependent, I mean, I, I learned a lot. I met a lot of people. I learned how to talk to people. You learn how to get a, along with people yeah. for the most part. Yeah. But uh, moving every three years, I wouldn't I would never put a, uh, my kid through it. Yeah. And, and, for, for and me, I respect, you know. Yeah, it was what it was, right? I saw those, uh, those guys coming in yesterday on a sub. They're on a six-month deployment. I can't imagine it. I, I get homesick now from, well, my wife doesn't really want me to come home, but yeah. I, I miss it. And, and, uh, but the, the sacrifice that they make, I, I take my hat off and uh, thank every one of them yeah. with, with the way they live. Yeah. So, and, their, and their wives and their dependents. Yeah. And so, you, so you graduate from, from Philadelphia, high school in Went Philadelphia? Went to Springfield, Delaware County, which is in the north side of Philadelphia. Yeah. And then when you came back to London, did you, was your dad still in the service or was he coming back? He too? was still in the service. He, yeah. uh, we were stationed, his last station was Philadelphia, and he, he retired after that, but I came home as soon as I got out of high school, because my uncle came and got me, because they thought I was going to end up in jail for some reason. <laughs> Philadelphia has that effect on some people. <laughs> uh, you, you know, what's funny is I, I, I'm so tribal. My, my, none of us left. Um, I have a couple, a couple cousins went to Florida, uh, but for the most part, I have 24 first cousins, and for the most part, they all went to school in New London. A couple went to East Lyme, and my brother went to Mobville. So, so we we're in a, a real small area, and to be able to lean on family and friends, and always know that it's different when you're at school and someone's picking on you, and someone says, "Oh, that's my cousin." It's a different situation. And then they, you know, the person that's picking on one person realizes that they're related to half of the the school. It becomes an issue for them. Uh, and I, I, I often think about these young Navy kids. You bring it up because it definitely seems like it's affected you. Uh, you know, in, in, in how you've operated. So when you come back to New London, uh, your, your uncle picks you up, and what do you do then? You, would you go to the furthest, did you go to school after, or did you go right into the workforce? 
No, I was lucky enough uh, to get an apprenticeship uh, with Albert Filipino. Filipino. Who was the I best. Was... And I was lucky enough, I worked with, as far as I'm concerned, the best mechanics there were. And uh, yeah. they, they wanted you to learn. One was from Groton, by the way. See, uh, it's not one, so bad. Either. One of my mentors, Bill Sullivan, lived on Blueberry Hill Road, I think it Blueberry was. Blueberry Hill, yeah. Tremendous guy. Yeah, Bill Sullivan. So someone will recognize that name out here. But uh, Filipina, actually, at the tail end of Filipina, when they were still just about surviving, I was entering my career. In 1989, I started with Tech Air. It's a low and, blow, Joe. What's that? It's a low blow. It's a low blow. You, what, Tech You're Air? making an old man out of me here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, there was a, they were they did quality work. They so they still had the building. It's funny because I was in the building. On, on, they're on crossroad on the crossroads. Right. Um, in the back there, some some guy bought it that we were doing some work for through Hillary Company. Some guy was doing they fixed like you know industrial machines, and we were doing some work for him there. But uh, I worked I worked with them at the Lyman Allen Museum. They did that job. They did a bit, bunch of different stuff. So you worked for Filipino for how long? I served my apprenticeship with Filipino. Yeah. And then I went out to Millstone. And then I went to Groton Piping. Yeah. And uh, bounced around a little bit. And uh, then I went in business. So you, but you were in the, so the, out, the whole Filipino was union then, because you didn't, right? Yeah. And then for the, and then at Millstone, you were with like Atlantic or whoever the big, Pectel or whoever the big guy was. At. Yeah, it was a Basco, Stone and Webster. Stone and Webster. And uh, yeah. Bechtel. Yeah. But I never stayed for long periods of time. Yeah, but uh, it was tremendous. You work with the Hodges, Andy, and absolutely those boys. And Andy Hodges Vinny. looks like Reggie Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> you're right about that a little bit. I worked with Andy. He's a I'm a union sheet metal worker. He's a union fitter, so we worked together quite a bit here and there. But so now, so now you're done because you want to open your own business. Were you laid off and said you're going to do it, or you just said I'm done working for other people and I want to? <clears throat> Actually, uh, if you want to know the truth, I got in a little political. I got a little political mess. Union and, political or political? Union political. Union, union political. <laughs> we know how that works. And, uh, I screwed up pretty good, but uh, it, it all worked out in the end. Well, they, so you may be on the outside. It's funny because every single sector of, of one's life somehow is political, right? Because somebody has either the power to put you on a job or take you off a job or put you somewhere else or put you working with a guy that you don't like or on purpose. I mean, that's been done to me too. We know how those, those things work in funny ways. So you were kind of forced into it, but it's got to be scary, right? You're, you're starting a business and you're like... No, it was, it, was, it, was, it was stupid, to be honest with you. And uh, I, I made a lot of mistakes yep. through the years, which yep. I think about all the time. Yeah, but you know what? If you, are, you got where you are and you, you, you served, for 40 years you ran a business. That's pretty, it's impressive, Murray. That's something to be proud jo of. Joe, the only thing I got, I got uh, four grandkids. Oh. Out of my life, and uh, yep. if I didn't have them, yep. nobody ever see me ever again. Yeah, but yep. uh, but you're fighting for, for them. For, from that, you know, from that perspective, it was all worth it. Yeah, I mean, you do you do your show, you do uh, the guys you talk to a lot, of, and it's the same with me now. I, I find that the things that I want to see changed have very little to do with me. Like if if you're fighting to lower a tax, or you want something done, or you don't think something should happen in London, it's it's because you're thinking of your grandkids now. Because my, my mind's already transferred to that. Like everything that I do and, and I move forward. Of course, my daughter, you know, she means so much to me. And then she brought this little guy to me that just, they, they make you want to melt right in your chair, right where you're That's sitting. The best thing in the world, grandkids. It is, right? There's nothing better. He calls me Lolo, he, so. You know, I'll tell you a funny story. I was doing a job in the Bahamas for a real nice guy, uh, John Bochain. I don't know if you know John Bochain. He's from, uh, he was from New London. He lived, okay. uh, re real, real good guy. He got me over there. I, I was, uh, you would never have a job like this in your life. They really didn't need me, to be honest with you. Yeah. But, but the guy liked me, and he, he was the second largest property owner in Nassau. Uh, very wealthy man. You'd never know it. Talking with him uh, was exactly like talking with you and I right here. Yeah. So I was in, in, in and out of there. Because of, you know, the, the computer and the cell phone, you can be in two places at once. So I could be away from here and uh, over there. They flew me back and forth for a couple of years. 
for two or three weeks at a time. What, and what years are you talking? Is later or early in your career? This was probably 10 years ago. Oh, 10 years ago. 10 years ago. So I get over there one night, and uh, I'm thinking uh, I, I should be taking my grandson to soccer tomorrow, you know? I'm yeah. over. I thought I, I thought I was having a nervous breakdown. Wow. I got up that morning. I said, I'm getting out of here, and I'm not coming back. I don't care how much money I can make over here. I'm not coming back. And I, 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 for a while, I had nightmares that I had to go back. Wow. But that's that's. That's how. I, that's just how I. Feel. It sounds corny, but no, it doesn't. Uh, it, I, it, I understand. It, it shows you the, the, your, how the, your grandkids are a magnet, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and you're not leaving it aside. I, I, you know, I talk about that often. I have a lot of friends that, you know, they say, well, when you retire, you can go and move, and it could be anywhere in the country, but it wouldn't be nice, and no one knew you. And and I, I don't. I'm the opposite. I want. I like going to a restaurant and either go out and one, and people know and who I am, and know what I like and, and already before before you sit down you're, they know what you know you're getting the chicken wings or whatever it is. I like the camaraderie of it all and I can't even imagine. I've had some uncles that did. They they left E B, you know, retired at fifty five. My uncle's eighty eight now. So, you know, here's someone that had a big impact on my life that retired and went to Florida first, or Houston first, then Florida and now they're in Las Vegas. But in the last thirty five years I've probably seen them couple dozen times you know and it's nothing against them that's what they wanted to do but it's hard for me to imagine my my, my mother and father stayed right here like my, my mother lives in Waterford and my father lives in Montville so in 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 10 minutes I could be at my mother's house uh, and I, that's important to me um, and, and I want to make sure that my, my grandson has the same thing I, I had a panic attack when my daughter moved to Ledger <laughs> she, she they packed up and I'm and they're looking for houses and I'm, I'm looking in my neighborhood you know, something close, and they're looking for land, which there's not a lot of land in my neighborhood. You know where I'm at by the soccer field. And, uh, you know, that I understand that, too, that she's become like a farm girl now. She loves the country, and they got chickens and all that other nice. stuff. So I talk to them about civilization now because they weren't even, you know, they're a little further away from what I grew up in and then moved to here, and I had a little more breathing room. And now they just, I think they have like eight or nine acres, and they can, they want to build a path where they can do dirt bikes through the woods and, all that other stuff. Tremendous. Yeah. So how, how many grand, let's talk about your grandkids. It's, it's the focus of your life, right? I mean, you, you and your wife, how long have you been married? 51 years. That's it, huh? Yeah. That's funny. You got married the same year I was born, Murray. Uh, not, what, uh, what month? You know, um, my wife's not listening, so I can tell oh, you that every year I have to call the, the town hall to see what, what, uh, <laughs> what date it was, but it was uh, August 28th. August 28th, yeah. 51 years. I don't know what year, but... Uh, yeah, that, that's awesome. 51 years. So, and then how I want to divorce myself, to yeah. be honest with you. I don't, know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how she did it. She must be a strong woman. She's, she's a strong, stubborn yep. woman. Yep, yep. Every, 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 behind, every relationship, someone has to be the strong one. It, it worked that way in my house, too. Keeps you grounded, and, you know, you can, you're, you're going out, and you're hustling, and you're doing everything you're doing in, 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 the, in the plumbing world and in your business, and if you come home, and if it's not, if you don't have someone strong there, then it doesn't, even, it doesn't work. Yeah, she's definitely a strong one. Yeah, and then how many kids? I had four. Four kids, yep. And uh, four grandkids. Four grandkids. So how, your, what's boys and girls for your, for your Un kids? Unfortunately, my son-in-law uh, didn't give me the opportunity to have a granddaughter. Oh, he did. I've got all grandsons. I would love to have a princess to spoil. <laughs> I can't imagine. I, I'm in the same boat. My, my daughter's about to have her second, and uh, it's going to be two boys. And, uh, you know, it's funny because when they're young, you know, and, and God, you've dealt with this. I talk to my, my future son-in-law, and I'm saying, hey, you know what? Maybe you guys should have a third or something because I wish, you know, maybe we had more. Or, and you talk that way. And when someone's young, they're in the middle of it. They don't see the end like we do. They don't see the end, what a grandchild will look like or, or what, can, what the potential is later. They're looking at the now. And the now is, how do I feed this extra kid? How do I get this extra kid to the, another soccer game or another practice? And uh, it's sad because we always, you know, the, you say the older you get, the wiser you get. But I think looking back, none of, none of it matters. Even the little fights that they have, you know, where, where, they're, where they're like, oh, they're upset that the kid isn't able to go to this or that, you know, none of it matters. Well, we, that's what the that's the beauty about being a grandparent is. And what what I see now, my youngest one is eleven. 
So I've been in a position where I put them on a bus in the morning, and this was true with all of them. Uh, put them on the bus in the morning, be there in the afternoon when the bus, they get off the bus. And my oldest one is 18, he's going to a Holy Cross. So I don't pick him up anymore. No. He's in love. He, I lost him. He's in love? He's in love. Found, he found the one already? Uh, I think so, yeah. <laughs> he, he, he didn't have time for me. <laughs> yeah. The next one is 16. Yeah. He's in love. A lot of love going on in the Renshaw, yeah. in the, in the Renshaw family, huh? So all I got now is James, who is 11. Yeah. And he's running the whole show. But pretty soon I'm not going to be able to pick him up every day. It's going to kill me. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? You, you feel you feel it's hard. I know what you're saying because I can't even imagine. Right now I'm in the, in the, the four-year-old stage, which I'm sure you wish you could rewind time and get that back or just have a few more come up, right? Um, and, and now we're, we're going to be back with the baby stage again, which I think the four-year-old stage right now is my favorite. But I think every, every year is going to be my favorite. You know, he'll grab stuff and help you, help you build stuff. He's one of those kids that's just going to be yeah. a hands-on kid. Do you, do, you, do you teach any of the other kids do plumbing? Did any of your kids take you that? got one take up the son trade? that's a plumber. Yeah. One son that's a policeman. Yeah. Where does he serve in the, the police? What, what East Lyme. East Lyme. Yeah. So, you, so they're but, local. Yeah. 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 The, uh, you know, it's the kids that, that, that steal the show. Yeah. yeah. My old, the, the two boys didn't, didn't marry. They don't have children. Yeah. So um, I can I kind of feel like they left me out. They could have they could have had a couple too. We yeah. made it bigger. <laughs> but you know, I came up with a, a new philosophy on worldly things. Yeah. With regard to kids, you know, you advise your grandchildren, or you advise your brother, or you advise anybody, and for some reason we don't listen to what other people who've had experience made mistakes. Say, I was I was like that myself. You told me I couldn't do it, I did it. Yeah. It's human nature. It is. If you could figure out human nature, you could solve yeah. a lot of problems of this world. And I mean, look at us, 2022, we're still killing each other? Yeah. What the hell is going on? Yeah. Somebody needs yeah. to figure that out and, and save a lot of people a lot of headaches and heartache. I think that's what I'm trying to do on this show, actually, because... I do marriage counsel too. You do that. Yeah, I'll, do that. I'll, I'll call Tammy. See, see what's. Yeah, come down to the shop. I do. We, come, you guys do it right in the old shop. Right in the shop. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's some, but you, you are. The, the, I think the, the answer is love. If, if, if people, when I look at my grandson, if we could look at other children the same way and have that same feeling. I mean, obviously, I'm connected to my grandson at a different level than I could with any other child on this planet. But you really have to feel the same for all, right? If 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 my son my grandson goes to a class with twenty six kids in there, I want to make sure that all twenty six are are healthy and happy and 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 I think community we can do that we can we, like we have there's a lot of organizations and families and parent groups that get together and just to make sure the Sandy Hook tragedy that happened, uh, w which can't be described to anything other than you know hopefully it's a once in a lifetime and it never ever happens again. Uh, but a lot was learned from that that they they went in and dug down the families. I've got to meet with, with a lot of the mothers and fathers who lost their, their, I mean. Can't imagine it. You just can't even picture it. But they've taken that and they really have developed programs and, and figured out what, what the right path is. And, and they didn't just think about their own little school anymore. Because when you talk to anybody that's in the Newtown and you want to talk about counseling and they say, don't worry, our kids are getting all of it. You know, the, this tragedy made them focus on it. But they wanted to see, okay, how do we move this outward? And how do we move to other communities? And a lot of it is just talking and, and making sure that and, and making sure we stay closer together. I think our main goal in life in our country seems to be, you know, who can have the most, who can do the most. When it really all should about boil down to, you know, who has, how much love can you give? How much time can you see your family? You you have the love. You you left what sounds to me ten years ago. If someone told me I had a job that I knew and I was getting paid well and I happened to be on an island. Uh, I think most people would take that and say, why, why would you ever leave it? 
and it was that that love in your heart, that feeling that I can't be away from my grandkid because you know we we all have limited time. You know that we had we had a colleague that we lost today last night in a in a car accident on the way home from the governor's ball in a in a wrong way. I read that um, terrible. Thirty nine years old. If you knew him, or you'd love him. The kid, this kid, if he'd have you could have the worst day going that you've had all week and something going wrong, and when you walked in, this kid's smile was so big, and he was just a really happy, jovial guy. And uh, to lose him at 39 years old, it just proved to me again that we, that we have to pay attention to what, who we love and what we love and not, not get ahead of ourselves. I, we all tend to do that. If I do this, 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 and that, and in 10 years I can do this, how about today? You know, make sure that you, you're hugging your grandkid. It doesn't sound like you forget that, though. Well, you know, Joe, the other side of the coin, though, I feel guilty at times. We have so much and there's so many kids. I mean, that I, I see on a regular basis that don't have anything. Yeah. And it's it's heartbreaking. It really it is. is. It is and it's it's you you can get it yourself in a and and that's how I felt too because we we're, we're in the world of working in the world of addiction. You it, it seems like this wave of people that it just seems like it, it's nonstop and it does feel that way. My wife was on the phone for the last it's it's busier now. It it go it comes and goes in spurts for whatever reason. But she's been on the phone every single day dealing with people trying to get, and it's a mom that calls it for the very first time for this very minute she found out her son's addicted and she's just uncontrollable. And to get her from uncontrollable to get her to the point where she's taking action, where she's actually gonna be able to help her, her, her loved one, because that's hard to do. You know, when someone's addicted, the answer is not to give them any money and not help them and not, that's a hard, that's a hard thing to take in and breathe. You're talking about tough love? Yep. It's hard. Yeah, it didn't work it's, for me. Yeah, tough yeah. love is. It, it, well, I say tough love, but it's just meeting people where they're at and helping them when they're when they're when they get the help that they need. I mean, how are we going to solve this problem? It, that's love too. I, I mean, it sounds it sounds so. St I mean, I remember used to hear people say, "All we need is love," but you need we need to meet people where they're at, uh, and we've done that. I mean, we've seen miracles. Mur and Murray, I, if you came to our office down on Thames Street and saw that, do we have all these pictures on the wall of people? And people walk in and say, oh, my God, did you lose them? They said, no, we didn't. They, they, they were so addicted that we thought we did lose them. And guess what? They found a way. They came back. And here they are. We, we only have a minute left, Murray. Really? A minute. It's a half-hour show. Wow. We, 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 go, we go really fast here. It's, it's, uh, and I knew it would be. And, and I'm glad. You're, you're my first real New London guy that I've had over here <laughs> in 34 shows. Well, my mother I had on. Open your eyes up, Joe. You know, I, we're, we're in civilization I over here. I can't open them up too wide. They kind of, you know, when I smile, they disappear. That's what happens to my and I had some rotten, rotten questions for you, too. You had rotten questions? I'm not in yeah. politics anymore. So this I is know, but you're, you're still, I, you know, you're the last guy in the world that I would ever have believed was in politics. Yeah. When, really? <laughs> when, when you, what were you, what were you before? Uh, uh, town, state, town council. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Then I was on RTM, but yeah. So, uh, oh, well, I didn't agree with but just about anything you did. We like each other, I think. That's still a, that's not the, that's not debatable. No, we'll absolutely. debate our politics. We are friends. Uh, Murray, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having uh, me. Guys, next Thursday on Born Political, we'll see you. It'll be live again. Uh, and if you get a chance on Atlantic Broadband, you'll see Murray's show. I'll be on that, and I'll share it out on my Facebook, too. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Take it easy. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. That was fun.